Yeah, what's up? I'm gonna kick it with the mind, y'all know. So slap, can I kick it like this? Here we go. Well, it's time to make that change. People of the world today are fading. All of us have our ups and downs. You better think about it or you won't be around. What we need is a little bit of love. Sent by one from heaven up above. Chicken for tea is simple and plain. This ain't no game, you know what I'm saying. Good evening, everyone. I absolutely love that song because even though it's an older song by the Winans, it is absolutely true today. It is time for us to make a change on things. Amen. And we're going to spend about 15 to 20 minutes in ministry tonight talking about it is time for us as Christians to stand up and change things. Hallelujah. But before we do that, let's go to the throne. Father God, Lord, in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father God for being on the throne and being who you are, Father God, allowing us to be us, Father God, and allowing us to make changes into our lives so that we can please you better, Father God. Father God, it is time for the Christian to stand up and take a stand, Father. It is time for us to make a change in this world, Father God. Father, change comes from us. It starts with us, Father God. And if we can change us first, then we can start helping the world change to be a better place, Father God. Father, we absolutely love you. We ask you to come down here upon amongst us and sit down amongst us and just be in ministry tonight father god let your spirit flow freely father god and father i just thank you for all the saints that are capable and able to pull this up and watch this uh, whether it be friday night or saturday or sunday or whenever they find time to watch this ministry father god i ask that you give them an extra dose of blessing father god give them an extra ounce of your blessing, Father God. Father, I love you and I thank you. And it's in your son's name we pray. And we all say together, amen. All right, Christian friends. So before we can ask the world to change and before we can make a change in, in the world or it's time to make a change, it's time for us to stand up as Christians. We have to take the time to make a change in ourselves. amen. And what I wanna tell you is it's never too late to make that time. Hallelujah. You've got to stand up. We have got to be bold. We've got to step out. This world is in chaos. And so the first thing I want to share with you is uh, most of you are probably already doing this, but if you're not, it's time for you to change how you look at things. Okay. The first thing we want to do is this. So here's what we need to do first. If we want to say that it's time to make a change, change has to come from within first. And if you're not doing this, Christian friends, I challenge you to do this for a week and see the change in your life. All right. Hallelujah. 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. If you're not seeking God first, the first thing you do in the morning, then you're allowing things to seek you out first, okay? If you're not filling yourself full of God and seeking He first, the kingdom of God, then you're allowing something else to fill that spot first. And then you're going to be crying out for the Lord anyhow because your day started wrong or this started out or something happened and you're going to cry out for the Lord to help you get through it. And let me tell you something. By doing this, by seeking God first and the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, um, your life is going to change. Things are going to start being different. Your first cup of coffee, coffee after you seek ye first the kingdom of God is going to taste so much better. Whatever you do after you have seek the first thing in the morning, after you have sought out God in the morning and you've got filled up with the power of God, your morning will change. Your day will change. Your attitude will change. Hallelujah. So I challenge you, Christian friends, if we're going to make a change in this world and we want this world to change, it's time for us to make a change. Hallelujah. It's time for you to step out and seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 6, 33. What does it tell us? Let's think, let, let's think about getting up early, okay? Now, I know I just said it. Get up a little earlier. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. So now I also have to hold myself accountable because I can't just tell you to do it. And if I don't do it, well, then that just makes me look stupid, okay? But let's think about Mary for a second, okay? Now, your son, her son, was just crucified, buried, put in the tomb. But what did she do Sunday? The Bible tells us she rose up early. She didn't get up at 10. She didn't get up at noon and just kind of stroll on down to the tomb and took her time. No, the Bible tells us that Mary rose up early and went down to the tomb, okay? So that's telling us if Mary rose up early to seek ye first because she wanted to seek Jesus out and see if everything was still intact, right? And when she got there, the body was gone. And so she had to go tell the disciples, but she sought after Jesus first thing in the morning. She rose early. So if it's good enough for the mother of God, absolutely it's good enough for us to rise up a little bit early. 30 more minutes isn't going to, you know, harm you. 30 more minutes, that's 30 more minutes you get to spend with the creator of time creator of life the creator of everything all right look behind me look at that great backdrop i mean look at that the puget sound the mountains back there you got the uh, chambers bay got some flowers it is beautiful amen but think about that man didn't create that god created all that hallelujah now man might have created the golf course but god put in man's mind how that golf course should look amen and it's time for us to stand up and make a change. Hallelujah. Now, I hear a little story about this golf course. The, the U.S. Open was played here. And the players said after the U.S. Open that the greens were terrible. They would never come back and play. So two things could have happened. The people running Chambers Bay could have said, whatever. Or they could have made a change. And they stepped up and they made a change to the course. They fixed the greens. They took care of it. They saw what needed to be done. They went forth and they took care of the greens at Chambers Bay. And now things are starting to come back to Chambers Bay. And I actually know the person who was involved in making the cha changeover of the greens. Um, Evangelist Roxanne. But, you know, a little shout out to my love. They knew change needed to happen in order for things to move forward, all right? So is it in our Christian walk, friends. Change needs to happen in order for us to move forward. This world that we live in right now is chaotic and crazy. And I'm telling you what, change needs to happen in order for us to move forward in this world, okay? And I can't make a change in the world if I'm not willing to make a change in myself. I have to be willing to change myself, to change some of my mindsets, 
It changed some of the things that I used to do to push them away and let God take over my life completely. Hallelujah. I have to be able to change. I can't let the old ways come back in my thinking. I have to take time. It's time. It's time. It's time. I have to take the time to focus on myself to make a change so I can help make a change in the world. Amen. As a coach, as a football, baseball, wrestling coach, if I'm not willing to go to clinics and learn new things and techniques and rules and regulations, then I am setting up my team for failure, whatever sport I'm coaching. Golf, if I'm not willing to change some of my swing habits or some of the things I do, then I am setting myself up for failure and I'm going to look at being in the 90s and the 100s all the time. And I want to be in the low, I want to be 88 to 85 to 82 to 70. But if I'm not willing to change, I'm not willing to take the time to make the change, then I can't expect the results to be any different, right? So it is with God. God loves us so much. He is just waiting for us to seek him first, the kingdom of heaven, so he can start making changes in our life. Hallelujah. So in order for us to understand truly what this scripture means about seeking ye first, we first need to know what the word seek means. The definition of seek is to go in search of something, to go out and find it, to try to acquire it, to go out and bring it to me or to chase after. Hallelujah. Now, the nice thing about we've all probably played hide and go seek and you cover your eyes and you count one, two, three. Sometimes you count to 50. Sometimes you count to 100. Sometimes you cheat and go to uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 89, uh, 92, 93. Ready or not, here I come. Bam, and you go in search of people, and they hide from you, and you try to find them. Well, I got a secret for you. Well, it's really not a secret. When you're seeking after God, he does not hide from you. He is waiting with open arms to wrap those big old strong arms around you and give you a hug first thing in the morning and say, let's do this, my creation. That's right. God created you. Let's do this, my creation. You and me, unstoppable. Because I have you, I have know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, for this day, for this very moment. He knows the plans he has for us. Okay, so if we seek him first, the kingdom of heaven, we're giving him a head start to get our day started. Hallelujah. It is so wonderful to know that Father God, the creator of everything, the mountains behind me, um, Fox Island back there in the background, if you didn't know that, the the bay, Puget Sound, the golf course, Chambers Bay, everything back there God created, the sand, the grass, the weeds, the weeds over here, everything God created, hallelujah, and isn't it great, the people walking on the course, isn't it great to know that the creator of all that wants to fellowship with us? Actually, he wants us to fellowship with him, but think about that. Everything that we can see throughout anything that we walk, God has created. Or God has given man the idea to create it. Hallelujah. Think about that. So if we want to make a change, it's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to fight. Hallelujah. It's time for us to let go and quit worrying about what other people think. Okay? It's time for you to step forward and make a change. So if we're letting things rule our lives... And we want to make a change on those and we and it's time for you to step up and make that change if you're addicted to something or if your prayer life isn't where you want it to be or you have you know you have rage when you drive on the road i know i used to man i used to oh man you cut me off i'm cutting you off I'm gonna get in behind in front of you i'm gonna cut you off and now i don't even like to drive the freeway anymore man gotta know his limitations hallelujah so if you want to do all that, you need to have the mentality of the lion. Yes, the mentality of the lion. And what is the mentality of the lion? You have to have an attitude of a lion. Amen. Your mindset has to be that of a lion. And if you've never heard this before, I want you to write this down. Okay. Um, number one, the lion is not the biggest animal in the jungle. That goes to the elephant. Okay. Number two, the lion is not the fastest animal in the jungle that goes to the cheetah number three 
The lion isn't even the smartest animal in the jungle. So what makes the lion the king of the jungle? Why is the lion the king of the jungle? He's not the biggest, he's not the fastest, and he's not the smartest. It's his attitude, his mental. His attitude makes him the king of the jungle. When he sees an elephant, he thinks lunch. When an elephant sees a lion, he thinks, I don't want to be lunch. Okay? The wildebeest, the hyenas, when they see the lion, they panic and run because the lion has the attitude that I am a winner and whatever it takes for me to succeed, I'm willing to do that. Hallelujah. Now think about it. If you have a bunch of sheep that is led by a lion, those sheep are always going to win because they're led by the attitude of a lion. Yeah, I just said that. Think about it. What does God call us? Sheep. And he calls himself the shepherd. But in reality, he's the lion leading the sheep. He has the attitude. I want that attitude in my life. I want to be an attitude of a lion. I want to go out and know that I am making a difference in life, in people's lives, in my life, in the people that I surround myself with, in the people that have come in contact to me. I want them to know that my attitude is I am a leader and I am going to help you conquer whatever you need to conquer in life to make you a better person. Hallelujah. That's the attitude of a lion. So if you want to stop smoking and you've tried to stop smoking, you've got a time for you to change your mindset. Time for you to give it all to God, hallelujah, and have the attitude of a lion. If you want to stop drinking or, or the way you process things in life, um, the way you operate at work, if you want to change all those things, you need to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and ask God for help in these things, hallelujah. You see, the attitude of a lion will take you a long way, but seeking ye first the kingdom of heaven takes you even farther. Hallelujah. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, Christian friends, and then go after it. Follow God's direction. Do what God asks you to do. Hallelujah. Go and get it done. Don't sit back and wait for somebody else to do it for you because then it will never happen and you will have the attitude of a sheep. You know, sheep just follow. They just... <clears throat> Pastor talked about when he worked at... Um, the shearing, the slaughterhouse, and you take one sheep and you start them that way and all the other sheep are going to go uh, right behind him and what happens to that first sheep is going to happen to the last sheep, all right? The attitude of a lion. Be the head and not the tail, all right? Now, some of you, you know, you might, you and probably, everybody out there probably already knows what I'm saying, all right? And you, but this is, Confirm it. This is me saying that you're doing the right thing if you're doing this already. And I like when I get confirmation when I do something. You know, I, as a coach, um, when we coach stuff and we go to clinics and everything and we see that other people are doing what we're doing, it's confirmation that we're doing the right thing. Hallelujah. So me telling you, if you're already doing all this stuff, if you're already seeking ye first the kingdom of heaven, if you're already searching after God first thing in the morning or you're trying to acquire him, as soon as you can, or you're chasing after God, you don't have to chase after God. Let me just put that there because God will be right there for you. But if you wake up in the morning and you give God praise and you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, there's no better feeling. Your day has been started with God, the creator of all, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And see what happens. All right. Christian friends. Christian friends. Christian friends. I love you to death. I'm going to sit back and, and sign off now. And I'm telling you. To seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. I love you. God bless you. Say it with me. For the Lord. He is good, good, good. And his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Have a blessed rest of your night. Or afternoon or morning, or whenever you watch this uh, ministry, thank you so much. Be at peace. Go with God. Amen. And just love him more every day. And watch how 
things will change in your life. Watch how you will make a change. Watch how the time for you will start to change. Amen. God bless you.